everybody. My name is James Sabalski, and I am your moderator for this session as we move your mental health. And what can I say that hasn't already been said multiple times over what the last 16 months or so that COVID-19 and this pandemic, yes, are we getting closer to the finish line? Yeah, got my first shot there last week, feeling good about that. But my goodness, it has absolutely ravaged some of us uh, internally and mentally. And for some of us that have been absolutely glued virtually to screens for the better part of the last year. And then there's the home life element on top of it as well, whether you're trying to balance parenting on top of paying the bills. And speaking of paying the bills, I mean, it hasn't been easy for everybody. And obviously, this is why we're here to have that discussion today with some great people. Look, the Canadian Men's Health Foundation, uh, along with our partner, Anxiety Canada, they are committed to improving the resources available across the country for men struggling with their own mental health. And so this is a call to action. Move for your mental health. A call to action for Canadian men and their families from coast to coast from the Atlantic right to the Pacific to try to get families and Canadian men moving for their benefit in the month of June. And so we've got a wonderful panel of people who can kind of speak on this and their own personal experiences and reflections. And I'm very happy to catch up with some, some old friends as well. Not that we're old. I mean, you know, I just say that in, you know, it's just a broad speak, but nevertheless, uh, first things first, let's welcome. He is one of the foremost uh, anxiety experts in this country, Dr. Gordon Asmundson. Uh, doctor, how are you, sir? I'm very good. Thank you. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Appreciate you taking the time and looking forward to diving in with this. Uh, he is a former NHLer. He is now a boss, and I mean like, like a boss, running more than two dozen businesses, uh, fitness businesses. This guy has been a leader pretty much everywhere, a captain in the National Hockey League, playing over 20 years in the National Hockey League. Uh, he's also been a president of the Players Association, been a president of an NHL team. I mean, this is this is a guy who, man, who lives a charmed life in one breath, but man, you talk about dealing with stress as being the boss, wearing, wearing a C, being a president, uh, and also former Washington Capitol great, <laughs> Trevor Linden. How are you, Trev? I'm well, James. Great to see you. Great to see you as well. I'm glad and you mixed in that Washington Capitol thing too. That's <laughs> right. such a big part of my life there. I almost right. forgot about it. I've tried to erase it, but thanks for that. That's how people define you, right? Isn't it, right? You know it. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, uh, one of Canada's greatest athletes, man, he burst onto the scene back in 2000, winning gold for Canada at the Sydney Olympics. And then just when we thought we were ready to write off the store, he said, uh-uh, not done yet winning a silver medal in Beijing in 2008, a great inspirational story. And like I mentioned, one of Canada's great athletes and, uh, Pretty good hair too, man. Much better than mine. Oh, there you go. It's the COVID cut. <laughs> the COVID James cut. James right? and this is terrific. Yeah. I, I wore this shirt for you too. I think the last time we, we were in person, you may have been wearing the lumber. So uh, it was good. It was good to see I, you. I was going to say that is the most Canadian outfit possible. <laughs> I love it, man. I even thought I was like, do I pull that out of the wardrobe here? No way. Yeah. Here yesterday. Uh, Simon Whitfield. Great to see you again, man. It has been a minute, sir. It has been. It certainly has been, and it's nice to connect through something meaningful. And uh, and on this panel today, it's it's great to be with everybody. Yeah, let's uh, let's so let's kind of dive in on this, guys, and and where we are today, and move for your mental health. And I think before we kind of dive into, you know, what we can do and how we're all kind of coping through all of this. Um, first things first, maybe some personal reflection, Doctor. I'll start with you, but Gord, how, how have you managed these last what 15, 16 months here? <laughs> Yeah, you know, my life has become revolved around researching and trying to understand the mental health impacts of, of COVID. And, you know, like, like many people, it's just 24-7. Uh, and you talked about some of the challenges for, for some of us. You know, I've got a 14-year-old kid who's uh, schooling at home and wants to be out shooting hoops and stuff and you know all of that stuff is uh, pretty much shut down so you know it's uh, it's a changed lifestyle for us for sure Trevor how about uh, how about yourself how have you uh, how have you been coping through all this well I think that um, you know there's I mean it's, it's been 15 months of um, 
I guess, total interruption of what we thought was normal. And I think that for me, when I reflect back, I think that, you know, I've always been a believer that um, mental health affects everybody. And, you know, speaking from a men's, from a men's standpoint, I mean, it's, it's real for all of us. We may want, want to deny it. We may want to push it in the back, but it's real. And I think the last probably 14, 15 months has even amplified that even more. And so um, it's been um, like for everyone, it's, it's been tough. I think from certainly from the business side, it's been really, really challenging as it has for most people. Um, and from the personal side, just those social interactions, um, it's, it's been hard. And I think it's, it's made us more aware of, of uh, some of the challenges that we face and brought it to light a little bit, which at the end of the day could be a very good thing. Which, uh, besides uh, picking your favorite hand sanitizer over the past 15, 16 months, uh, how have you been managing over on the island? Yeah, we've certainly had a different experience here with, with a bit of a lower case count. Um, I've seen my, with my family living back east and uh, watching carefully what's happening there. It's been, uh, yeah, you see that you see that across the country, people are challenged, right around the world, people are challenged. Uh, I know for us personally, I can see it's, you get to really confront your shadow self. If your shadow self gets you, it, it speaks too loud and it says, you know, you don't need to go for that walk in the morning. You don't need to get outside. You don't need to have your routine. Just, just hunger down. Then uh, that takes over. And so for our family, that's been the message is that, is that get outside message as best we're able. Get some, as much fresh air as we can and, and adhere to routine. Find routine. Find some sort of agency over the day to day. And for us uh, as a household, it always just starts with getting out the door in the morning and, and it's an extra lap of the block or it's just a little bit of, ex, you know, to, a place to expel all that extra energy that's coming with it and to see some smiling faces out and about that, uh, that's been lacking. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, you know what? And I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Just trying to get some of that fresh air. Dr. Gord, I mean, you, what have we learned about the importance of, you know, physical activity through a time like this where, I mean, it's easy for us to kind of hunker down in the, in the house and the screen time element, but at the same time, you know, just feeling that importance of, of getting that fresh air and physical activity right now. Yeah, that, that's critical. You know, what we, what we know is that we've all been impacted by the pandemic in, in some way, shape or form. And we also know from, from our research that more than 50% of Canadians have reported very high levels of COVID related stress. So, you know, there's, there's an abundance, there's no shortage of stress. We also know that it's impacted us in, in various different ways, but We've had to follow public health measures and guidelines, which have really taken away a lot of the things that we're used to doing. And, well, you know, youth, youth sports, right? And, and how yep. that, I mean, you mentioned you've got a 14 year old, you know, Simon, I, you know, I know you got kids, Trev, you got kids as well. I mean, I mean, so, I mean, I help coach my daughter's soccer team and it's, you know, skills drills, right? There's no games. I mean, kids don't want to just sign up to practice. And we, we watched as over the course of the season, we lost a couple of kids, doctor, like, you know, because that that's not as fun. Yeah, no, it's not. And so we've been shut down in that way and we've been limited in what we can do. And I think that uh, that you've all mentioned a couple of things that are really important. And so what we know and we've known for a long time that physical activity is good for our physical health. And we've also known that it's good for our mental health. But it's really over the past decade that we've started to understand exactly how it's beneficial to our mental health and how much we need and, and how to go about doing that. Trevor, how, how about for you? Um, you know, I, it's funny when I, when I, whenever I see you and as long as I've known you for, I mean, we've connected for probably over 20 years now. And, and I think to the, you know, every time I see you, you generally have a smile on your face and you carry yourself with such a warm and, and, and sunny disposition for the most part, but, at the same time, as many people that would probably say, man, I would do anything to be Trevor Linden. I also think of like your journey, you know, being the captain of an NHL team at what, 20, was it 21? I think you were 21 when you took over wearing the C in Vancouver. Um, I think of you being, you were the president of the Players Association a year that the league canceled the season. 
you know, when you're trying to help, trying to keep the peace and trying to get things on the rails, you were the president of an NHL team during a rebuild. Uh, you know, you're managing, you know, two dozen businesses right now that have effectively, with Trevor Linton and Club 16, and, and you know, these effectively have been closed for the better part of almost a year and a half are coming up on. You know, as much as I kind of say, man, he's an absolute rock star. I mean, internally, you've you've gone through, I'm sure, some incredible peaks and valleys. How have you been able to manage that? Or do you have you found that sort of value in physical activity where you just I need to get out for a run? I need to go for a skate here. Yeah, I think, James, for me, I, I guess it kind of happens because for being a professional athlete, what I didn't realize Every day when you're training, you're getting that positive endorphin rush that you don't even realize what that is or what that does to your, your, your mental disposition or, 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 or how you see things. And, you know, obviously when I retired in 2008, I, I kind of, and I think what, you know, what, what was my job in training as an NHL player became my lifestyle of, you know, and that, that happened organically, you know, in and around that 30 years age and, and now it's something that I love to do and I enjoy it. But most of all, I know that it makes me a better person. It makes me a better husband. It makes me a better friend. It makes me a better coworker. Um, and and that, that activity, getting out and moving is, is, is truly, I, I, you know, I'm passionate about the fitness, but, you know, the, uh, you know, fitness and, and the business, because I believe it's not only um, for our physical uh, part, but more than anything, it's our, it's our, our, it's for our mental health. And it, it truly is for me just having that. Um, it, it seems to sort things out and simplify. And, and um, uh, I think, you know, and, and, and I think naturally when things get challenging or, or stress comes our way, we tend to uh, want to, you know, cover up and, and, and hide. And, and, and I think the opposite is, is helpful is when we can, get out and go for a walk or go for a hike or, or go for a bike ride. I mean, those things actually, you know, help to put us in a different place. And that's, that's super important, especially, you know, over the last 14 months, but I think in life generally. Wait, you, you, wait, you must, you must kind of relate to those positive endorphins that, that Trev's talking about there. Absolutely. It's routine, routine, routine. And I've seen the times where I've gone out of that routine and I've paid the consequences. Um, I think the other piece there that, I don't know if it's the right term. It's this willing, this willing acceptance that there are circumstances that are happening that we don't have a lot of control over. And there's, we have expectations that we layer on top of that. And in this case, this a somewhat of a sense of willing acceptance of this is, this is what's happening. How do I find contentment within that? And this attitude coming to some place of this is not better or worse. It's just different. Um, that otherwise that narrative we find it just takes over and it takes over and it takes over and it becomes all of our being instead of just realizing huh if I'd just gone and walked out the door and done a couple laps of the field no devices no nothing I might have just recentered for a moment and find that place of just acceptance of okay this is the this is what's going on now and forever it will be changing and so be it you know it's I, I certainly don't want to make this about me because I'm nowhere nearly the athlete that are celebrated. You know, doctor, you and I can relate here, but, but I, I want to share, you know, kind of my own personal story for a second. And, you know, about, about seven, eight years ago, I had relocated. I, I was living in Toronto. I moved back here to British Columbia and settled in with the family and our kids were really young at the time. And my ex-wife and I, within about six months of us getting here, you know, we split up and it absolutely kicked the crap out of me. You know, it, it just, it just absolutely ruined me mentally. And I, and I struggled with it for a couple of years, trying to pick myself up off the canvas and, you know, going through all of it and, you know, right or wrong. The one thing I always tried to go back to was I need to get outside. And there were some stairs about, about a K and a half down the road. And I would run to those stairs and there was about 250 stairs down to the water. And I would, you know, up and down those about 10 times, but, you know, take that hour, hour and 15 minutes to, to kind of have my loop and, and do that. And, you know, I mean, you know, you're kind of looking for that finish line through the storm when you're in it. And it's, 
you know, you know, for anybody that's ever been to, through divorce, maybe you can relate or empathize, but it was, it was incredibly hard on me, but with what Trevor and Simon are both kind of talking about finding those endorphins, you know, have, have you seen those, those benefits in terms of what those two guys are talking about? Because, man, it felt like it was my escape. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Like there were times, you know, your mind's still kind of raging, but at the same time, you know, the sweat, you know, get the heart rate going. It did kind of help provide an escape there. Yeah. Listening to Trevor and Simon, I realize they're not just the elite of uh, Canadian athletes, but they're also elite therapists. You know, they got some really <laughs> insightful comments that are bang on. And, um, what we know is that if you can get into that routine, 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 you'll have that regular benefit, you know, the endorphin rush and the feeling good. But we also know from recent work that even a single session of 30 minutes of activity has mental health benefits. So if you can't get into that routine, even stepping out for a vigorous walk or a, a bike ride or whatever you can do for a brief time allows you to get that benefit, that reset, that reduction in stress, and, you know, maybe just, just that chance to reset and, uh, and de-stress a little bit. Do you not find like Simon, you talked about having to pay the price um, when you got out of that routine. What do you mean? Well, I, th I think for a long time, I thought it had to be a certain way. I prepared for high performance sport and I needed all of the dominoes to line up to be able to execute this thing I wanted to do. So I was meticulous and, and fastidious about the details. And I wanted, as I was left high performance sport, I still, it was either be, I thought it was either be all in or be all out. So I had these, these times in the past where I had no structure whatsoever because I was afraid, I think, of times of, of having to get back to that kind of obsessive, not kind of, that obsessiveness. But now what I've come to is like just at peace with, I love going out exercising whatever I'm wearing. You know, I don't need it to be, oh, I got to have those shoes, I got to have that performance thing, I got to have it part of this scheduled training program. Right now, my thing is like, I just get out the door. And if I can't get out the door, just out of the sight of the camera is, is what I call the awkward bag. It's a 15 kilo awkward bag that just gets lifted above the head. It doesn't need to be this very regimented program. It can be a moment of like recognition of like, whoa, I'm losing propriety of my emotional response right now. I can either react. Or I can go dive for the awkward bag and lift that above my head. And that for me was, is that transition. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. I can just lift that bag above my head and I'll be fine. Trevor, you're smiling. You, you yeah. So Simon, you can now ride your bike without having a watt meter attached to it. Is that what you're totally. saying? Totally. Yes. <laughs> Boom. Exactly. Yeah. Did you find that, Trevor, did you, did you find that as well as when you kind of finally stopped competing? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, like Simon, I did something that was um, uh, so specialized and was so at such a high performance. And then I transitioned it to, um, you know, I started to do some cycling and stuff that was rather high performance as well. And I wasn't as detailed. And, and I have to say now I'm, I'm really enjoying g getting out, as Simon says. And like what I love about mountain biking is just being out there in the trees and the nature not having a power meter not worried about you know just just taking everything in i remember thinking last weekend i was running through the endowment lands and just what struck me was all was the amazing color of green that is out right now those the green colors were just like i was just fascinated running yes. through this incredible rainforest and seeing these crazy colors of green mixed in with these other colors of green so and i think ultimately you know i mean uh, for me We've all had those those tough nights where we're got we're wrestling with challenges. We're going through changes that are so hard, and 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 we it almost feels like we have this jumbled mess of spaghetti. We can't make God. You can't wait for the morning to come. And and for me, what 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 fitness does is is really um, helps uh, uh, make sense of some of those things. And and. Boy, I tell you, I mean, the problems I have solved or the thoughts that I've gotten through my head with going out for a walk or going for a run just, you know, seems to clear things up and make things, gives me the ability to make sense of some things. And that's, that's been, um, that's been the most remarkable thing about my kind of 
journey with, with, with physical activity and how that relates to mental health? I, I'm sure, doctor, you probably talked to a ton of people, you know, like you said, I mean, 50% of Canadians have responded to an increase of, of COVID related stress, whether it's trying to homeschool kids, which, oh my God, like, honestly, one of the things I've been most thankful for here in British Columbia is the fact that they've kept the schools open compared to other places across the country. And oh my gosh, the, the three months that we went through that last year, not fun, not fun with four young girls running around the house and somebody was in tears every day. I, do you try to make that point as, do you stress that to patients that you see to say, look, you got to find a way to get outside? Yeah, absolutely. That's really important right now too, because a lot of the mental health uh, providers are seeing people much like we're talking here, you know, over Zoom and sometimes it's not in person and it's just not necessarily quite the same as those regular meetings. So taking advantage of those other strategies that we know help, getting out for that ride or that run, or, or you know, if you have access to the gym or, or the, the heavy bag or whatever it is, you know, you go do that. And <laughs> I, was, I was stressed uh, yesterday. Are you thinking of somebody when you're hitting that heavy bag, doctor? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes, you know, just, uh, but I, I, I actually did what uh, Trevor did uh, the, just yesterday when I was just feeling my mind swirling and needed needed that reset and I hopped on my mountain bike you know there's no mountains within 2,000 kilometers and there's no green it's all brown fields but you know I you just get out there and go forever and it allows you to do that exact thing reset right it clear your mind and it uh, you can think through things a little more clearly and then you come home or wherever you're going and you, you know you get back into those stressors and you're just able to deal with them a little more effectively so so yeah we we recommend that uh, approach most certainly to, to everybody because it's available to all of us what, what do you uh, what do you do these days uh, I mean you're close to the water uh, well I guess three of the four of us here on this chat uh, are, are close to the water I, I guess there's no mountains and no water right doctor but uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I find sometimes for an escape, if I'm up earlier, I've had a toss and turn, if the water's calm, I run out and grab a paddle and just hit the paddle board and stuff. Like, what, what do you do? I, yeah, I've been doing that for a long time. I live very close to the ocean, but recently I've gone back to just climbing the rock by the house. Um, I get out there, I have a, it's a little just path that I keep walking up and down. I speed up a little bit. I, uh, it's, as I alluded to before, I don't have a lot of routine to it other than it's just this location to go to. And I, and it's very simple. It's, uh, it's not, uh, I'm missing the, the activity of, uh, of organized soccer and organized sports, but my knee isn't, my hip isn't. So, uh, I've been playing a little tennis, walking the rock and, and waiting for soccer to open up. And as I alluded to, I mean, it, it will, it will, that's all going to happen when it happens. And in the meantime, you know, take care of yourself and take care of others. Trev, you're, you're also trying to manage, I mean, you got a little one in the house and it's trying to manage, you know, as they're growing up here and it, it's parenting, it's being the best husband you can be. It's, and then it's also trying to be a boss as well. I mean, what, what's your coping and what's your, uh, well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, he's three and a half. My son is three and a half. So he, uh, he couldn't give a rip about anything going on except uh, his <laughs> walks and his diggers and stuff like that. So, but I mean, I will say uh, he's been a breath of fresh air for both my wife and I, just because he's been a total diversion for us just to, to, you know, to see him, you know, and the every day is a new day and so much fun, um, you know, but I, I think there is that balance between, you know, obviously work and family and, and trying to make those things work. And especially these days when, you know, your work sometimes has to happen within your own house and that involves, you know, managing, you know, what the kids are doing and, and work and those things. So, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's so important that, you know, especially, you know, men are able to understand the challenges and stresses they face, you know, and, and that they're able to talk about it and that it's, that it's okay to talk about it. I mean, I lived in a culture in hockey where we had this saying, you suffered in silence, right? If you were hurt, you know, suffer in up. silence. Don't talk suck about it. it. Up, right? Yeah, it yeah up. exactly. And, and, and that's, 
generally how, you know, and even growing up, I mean, that's how we did it in Medicine Hat, Alberta. Doctor, I was, I'm, an, I'm a prayer guy, so I totally hear your uh, thoughts on that. But, but it's, it's, it's that exact, you know, you know, that mentality, that suffer and silence mentality that is, the, you know, in, in challenging times is probably the worst thing we can do is that, you know, bringing these challenges to light and, you know, and for men, not always having to be that silent, strong one that can, you know, be okay with um, things not going right or challenges or, or struggling mentally. I mean, this is natural and this is good and it's okay. And, and it's just good to talk about it because well, you got um, labeled, you got labeled if you tried to open up about that sort of stuff at one time. Right. Like, you know, I mean, I, I think we all kind of, you know, whether, you know, from high school or just generationally, as you kind of went through something, somebody that opened up or somebody, you know, on a men's side, if you cried, it was, it showed like this softness that, that didn't seem to be totally acceptable where doc now it feels like, man, it's okay to cry or it's okay to open up. And I mean, so much of us now, I think we're kind of a generation now that it's starting to open up more there where other generations, you know, you didn't, you know, grandpa, I mean, you think about how many people came back from world war II, didn't talk about it. Right. How many of those people would be diagnosed with something that we're probably never talking to anybody about those issues, but the kind of what Trevor touched on. I mean, it's okay to open up. In fact, it's probably critical to, to discuss it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Having that social support system is, is critical for all of us, particularly when we're stressed. And, and it is a different time and it is okay to be talking about those things. And it's, it's nice to see that happening in sports and we can also see it happening in other cultures that tend to have been um, male dominated and that have tended to be sort of uh, put up and shut up or suck it up like the, the military and policing and other first responder professions and, and they're opening up now as well and you're seeing the benefits of that so absolutely i mean when it's uh it feels like it's a new day we're not there in the finish line yet but do, do you got to you got a pretty busy household. Do you involve the kids and the family uh, with your physical activity? Like, do you, do you just get a, like, do you enough to get a full, like, 11 aside for a soccer game here in your household? Yeah. Uh, gran grandma, grandma was out a year and a half ago and showed us pickleball. And so, whether it's the driveway, I just or discovered it. Yes. Or the street, we're a pretty big uh, pickleball family. Uh, and then uh, there's a, there may be a, a hidden foosball table in the house that, you know, like, makes an appearance every once in a while and uh there's some great games that happen there again it's all in those cases so much of that is just about finding face-to-face -face time whether you're playing over the fence uh in the yard or we're playing foosball it's the moment where we're across from each other not uh, head down and on the screen so uh those things uh, i really found that's funny about foosball tables just being this place where we can always kind of grab each other and say hey like let's connect and you know first to three um so yeah those little strategies have to be all part of this and uh and i i really again come back to that for me it's for me personally it's it's trying to find ways that it doesn't have to be a certain way you know we have this expectation this this thing and then it's like letting go of those expectations and some of those stories that we tell ourselves that narrative we have running is just to say hey, you know what now is now this is what i'm doing i you know how do i contribute and go forth and prosper yeah. Gord, I mean, from your standpoint, like you said, I mean, you, you've got a family, you're trying to navigate through all this. And as we kind of talk about, you know, move for your mental health with the Canadian Men's Health Foundation in partnership with Anxiety Canada. Um, is it important to have that, you know, that isolated time for yourself to go exercise? Or is it just as important to, you know, get the family involved as well? Like, we, you know, we've all kind of touched on. I think the key thing here is to make sure that you're having fun while you're doing it, you know, so enjoyment and picking an activity that gets you moving, but that you also enjoy, you know, so that, that might be one of solitude, you know, getting out uh, for a run or a, a bike ride or a swim or a paddle, but it might also be getting together, you know, around uh, a net of some sort or, or, you know, getting, getting the family together and playing foosball or, or, what have you, something that gets, gets the heart going. So fun is really important. And also, you know, not, uh, not having to think of it as this set routine with special equipment and things of that. Although for people who are 
not professional athletes or people who aren't used to exercising regularly, some degree of routine is important because it's easier to go home and uh, sit down on the couch, turn on TSN and, and grab a beer than it is to change into your uh, workout clothes or like, like Simon said, it does, doesn't really matter what he's working out in. I really like that approach because you just go, right? It's easier to go do something before you sit down because then you get it done. And so routine to some extent is important as is accountability, whether uh, it is to somebody else or your family or your, uh, your smart watch or something that allows you to track a little bit because that allows you to, to, to assess your goals and your, your movement towards better health. So, you know, for people who aren't used to exercising, those things are important, but I really like this idea of, you know, you just go do something that you enjoy so that you're doing. I love all the references to something that says uh, you can almost make a game out of it. Yeah, James, you already said before. Is, um, you know, the other thing I think it's really important that has been challenging through the last 14 months is just those those lost social connections that we've had with friends. I mean, oh. because we're super isolated, you know, but for me, the one thing that has been uh, just a, a, a lifesaver is just being able to connect with friends outside in an activity, you know, you know, whether it be going for a run, going for a hike, going for a walk, whatever that is, it does two things. It kind of keeps you honest. It gets you to the start line, if you will, which is sometimes the hardest place to get to because you're meeting a friend or a couple friends. And, you know, I, it seems like, you know, by, you know, the week, the week click by and I'm kind of socially by myself on, on the Zoom calls or on the phone or whatever. And you really crave that, that social in-person interaction um saturday mornings there's a little run club there's four or five guys that run and i'm by far the worst runner they're all training for uh, a marathon uh, which i don't know is ever going to happen but that's they're training for one so i tag along as long as i can uh for 30 minutes and you know we tell some stories and have a chat and then i let them go and, and finish my run but um i think that's super important as well as those the social connection that you can make by doing an activity outside and, and it it gets you to the start line. It also fills that need to feel connected to, to people and, and to your friends again. And that's, um, I think, equally as important as what it does for you personally. Oh, my God. I mean, it's funny where you get caught up in your own respective bubble. But it's funny when all of a sudden, on the rare occasion that I'll have one of these with some buddies once in a while from across the country and you kind of go, oh my God, I forgot how much I miss, like, you know, the interaction. I mean, Whit, do you, do you find that as well? I mean, you're, you're a pretty engaging guy. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I but think the key word in all that- But you're also is, an islander too, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the key word in all that is going to be funny. You know, that's, uh, that's I think, what I love about sport um, is the, especially men, and that's something I've really enjoyed about the Canadian Men's Health Foundation is that the tongue-in-cheek attitude of don't change much there's a nod to the joke in that. And I tell you what, if you're, if, you know, if ever you, you needed another person, it's when you need them to be, you need that moment of vulnerability and that vulnerability comes with laughing and that laugh comes with, with humor. And I think that's something that, you know, I, I do the two things. I go to the, I go to the rock and I do my somber walk and I go into the tennis court and for a moment, I care if the ball went in or not. And I, I don't want to hear what, you know, whatever banter there, there can, we can produce from it. And uh, that for me would be, that's that social element. And uh, look, it's pathos. It's like the benevolent heart and the ridiculous, all of this. It's just, it's utterly ridiculous. And that, that acceptance of that sense of humor towards it, because all you can do is laugh, is for me, that's what I find that contentment in. Doc, what's the answer for, for people that look for that, that, to that physical activity in a team setting, but obvious and, and the social engagement as well. And we, we haven't had that. What, what's the answer? Or what's the solution, if anything, when we're all trying to, you know, be socially distant, if you will? Yeah, and I think that's going to depend on where any given person lives, but uh, and what restrictions we have on us. But it's it's making that effort to 
to get out and get together with somebody or with with some buddies to you know to go for a run or go for a big vigorous walk or, or play a game or whatever you can do within the context of the restrictions we have and I think Trevor also uh, touched on this idea of balance a little bit earlier and you know Simon as well it's it's all about finding balance you know we're all busy or we're all stressed but we have to find time we just have to make time to have some fun and have some activity for ourselves so we can reset and we're actually going to be much more productive and we're going to manage the stress a lot better if we take even that half hour or hour every day or two to to be active so yeah it's tough but but we have to sort of strive for balance just, just as we kind of wind things down Trevor, i want to bring it back to you for a second because as we mentioned you know you you, you oversee what over two dozen uh businesses with gyms and, and there are people that are self-described gym rats right that that need the gym to be they've got that routine and for a lot of different times over the what the last 16 months here you know people haven't had that so uh, what what sort of message or what sort of suggestion do you have for people that are the creature of habit, if you will. I mean, you were you were a creature of habit for so long. What, what sort of message can you have? And and Whit, maybe you can even chime in on the back end of this as well as a guy who was an elite athlete having that routine when you don't have that routine available to you. I think this has pushed us all to kind of find other ways to 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 get what we need and figure out what that looks like. And you know, obviously, for me, I mean, we're all super busy with work and family and day-to-day -day lives. And for me, I find I'm at my best and I start, I, I, I'm, I know it's not for everyone, but I tell you, if you can get into that routine of, I, I usually am out the door by five, five thirty, and doing something, either going for a swim, going for a run, a walk, what have you try to at least a few times a week. And, and that kind of sets my day up and then I get it and get it done and I can have the rest of the day to do what I need to do. And, and, but you know, the one thing about, you know, with, 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 club 16 travel and fitness. I mean, we've been able to stay open through this and, and it's been pretty rewarding because the, the, the feedback we've gotten from our members has been so incredible in that, that just, they're just appreciative that we're able to stay open and provide a safe, a safe environment and, 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 a, and, a, and a healthy environment because it's so important to them that they have that mental uh, fitness fix, if you will. Having said that, I mean, it's been challenging in that, you know, lots of people have, um, you know, gravitated to doing other things, um, you know, it, you know, outdoors, certainly now the weather's better and that's great too. What? Yeah. Again, for me, it comes back to that managing my expectations around things. We've, you know, we've talked a lot about the, the, the physical routine that we can do. And then in this case, for me, it's the, again, it comes back to that mental, you know, just being aware of my, my emotional state, and then manage my expectations around that. And so often that's aligned with if I'm able to get outside and get exercise, or even if I can't get outside, if I can just push, put an awkward size bag above my head, then I can find routine and I can and uh, make my way through that. Rev, I love the early morning. I never thought I would be that guy, but I feel like I am way more motivated to do it because the later in the day, I am totally oh, that guy that I'm like, I am not motivated to do it now. It yet. ain't gonna happen for me. And I, oh. I just, uh, there's no time, but I know that. And the best thing is I can go, I'll go to the pool early and swim, you know, uh, super early. And I get home before uh, my son is up and that's, uh, I don't miss anything. And that's kind of the, the biggest bonus. So I do but, that before um, school now, like totally. It's, it's like, I'm productive and you know, Brenda gives me grief. Like, why are you getting up so early? It's like, because I know I will, if I, if it's 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm yeah. no. okay. the best is sometimes I can leave and come back and no one knows I'm gone. That's the best. <laughs> that's one of the best parts. Um, so you gotta be stealthy. So um, stealthy or you're just not missed. It, that too, Yeah. <laughs> Hey, before we wrap things up, Doc, um, for, for people taking part in this and watching, um, where can we find more information, resources maybe at their disposal just to kind of to help them along the way? Yeah, that's a great question. And the good news is there's lots of resources. Uh, you know, I can look over at a list here and it's too long to, to discuss at this point. But one is get out and, and do something fun and be physically active. But Anxiety Canada actually has some 
resources for, for men and for others who are trying to deal with, with stress and anxiety. And they have a, a, an app um, called MindShift that is, uh, you know, it's a download onto your, your smart device and it's based on cognitive behavioral techniques to help people learn how to manage stress effectively. They also have something called uh, MindShift Online. So it's not something you do on your own on your device, but it's actually small groups also done online, but in uh, guidance with a, a professional counselor. So there's a fee for that one, for the online uh, download, that's free. But the, the groups, there's a fee, but it's accessible to most because they use a sliding scale, which means you know you pay, you pay what you can for that service. There's a lot of other- Well, Trevor uh, would pay more than I would. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, that's, that's sort of how it works. Uh, there's all kinds of other online resources available in Canada. The, um, there's also the option of seeking help from a, a therapist on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then if it's for COVID-specific stress, the Canadian Men's Health Foundation and Anxiety Canada have resources right on their websites. And our Psychology of Pandemics Network also has resources that are available for managing pandemic related stress. So, so, you know, there's just an abundance of, of help and it's just really taking the step to, you know, to, to speak out and, and seek that help. Well, that pretty much uh, puts a bow on uh, what we've been able to discuss over the last little while. Uh, gentlemen, an absolute pleasure. Great to catch up with all of you again. Uh, hopefully there's some green in the forecast for you at some point here, doc, in the not too distant future, but uh, Stay safe, and uh, on behalf of Trevor, Simon, Dr. Gord, my name's James, thank you so much. And remember, uh, June, this is the perfect time to do it. The weather's better. Uh, move for your mental health. And thanks for allowing us to take part in part of your day. Stay safe, everybody.